Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be doing some basic maintenance on my 2017 Chevy Cruiser. What should be basic maintenance, but the genius engineers at GM decided to take two very basic maintenance items. An air filter and a cabin air filter and make them into a little bit of a debacle to replace. So I'm going to try to show you a very easy way to go ahead and do this. I'll break this down. I'll put a link down or I'll put a annotation down below as to when each part starts. I'm going to start off with the air filter and then I'll start out with the cabin air filter. So when the cabin air filter starts, I'll leave a timestamp down below. So that way if you only want to watch one or the other, you can get to that point of the video. So I do this hopefully to help you save money because... The engineers at GM decided to be like, hey, screw you, we're going to make this simple, simple task really complicated, probably in hopes to drive you to the dealership to pay the mechanics the big bucks to go ahead and put these on. Um, but actually, I did get these parts on Amazon because I did actually find these a little bit cheaper. And I'll put these in my Amazon store. If you want to support the channel, buy them through my Amazon store. That would be greatly appreciated. So let's get some basic tools and I'll show you what's needed to get this air filter out. So to give you a close up as to what we're working at, we have one bolt. This is a seven millimeter that we'll need to loosen. There's an air tube right here and there is a little lever right here that we need to push in on and pick this up and that'll come out of the way. And then here on the air filter box, see the screw right here. There appears to be one, two, there's three of them and I suspect there's probably one more underneath here. So to do this job, you'll need a Phillips screwdriver and a regular or a seven millimeter for this here. If you have a drill, that will make life a whole lot easier for you. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to loosen this snorkel here and kind of try to get that out of the way. Uh, normally I would just take this off, it makes life easier, but there's uh, some tubes and stuff attached to that. Next, what I just showed you here, we're going to squeeze this tube, pick this up, and it just pops free so we're gonna get this out of the way fairly easy and there is one more screw down here now the only saving thing that the engineers did for us is they made it these screws usually stay in the cover I've watched a few videos on this again that rough idea and I've seen people mess with this this is, should be your mass airflow sensor now if you look, it's zip tied here to the cover, so undoing this connector does nothing for you. It's, it's not going to go anywhere. So, there we go. See, this thing is just a pain. Oh, we did not get this little screw out all the way. There we go. And there we have it. Let's see what it takes to get this out. There is a lot of leaves in here. Wow, I can't believe how much stuff is actually in here. Okay, so like I showed you earlier on here, if you can see that, let's try to zoom in. There's two arrows, there's three arrows, one up to this way if you can see it. So we're going to squeeze these two tabs and then push the air filter up. So squeeze these two tabs right here and then push the air filter forward and now it clears this and it should just pull straight out. There you go. So this is actually not that bad. I swear some of these videos I watched made to sound like you need an engineering degree to do this. So I'm going to get the vacuum and clean all this out before we reassemble this. Now 
Now that that's done, we're going to grab our air filter and we want these arrows to be visible. So we're just going to slide this here, slide this down, slide this piece down and then we're going to push forward to where that locks into place. It's a little tight, it is brand new. So take a little wiggling here. So you want to make sure that this tab right here is behind that plastic piece. So this is what we push in and it disappears. So this tab here needs to be behind this piece of plastic this plastic here is part of the air box you can see this is your your three arrows pointing up and those tabs is what holds this in place and if we squeeze it that's what moves it forward allows us to get it out but those tabs need to be locked so there we go we got our nice new air filter in here it is time to go ahead and put this back together and we pretty much just reverse the procedure this out of the way here a little bit best we can drop this in now if you're using a drill generally I would recommend set the clutch to something easy and then maybe come back and double check with the uh, with the hand screwdriver this is kind of like an impact driver so it automatically kind of clutches let's make sure we get the screws lined If you have an extension or a longer bit, it's probably going to help because the standard bit's a little hard to get in here. And I know this one's going to be a pain because I can't even see it. We got all four screws taken care of, and now we're just going to put this back in. There's a piece of plastic right here, it's nothing that so once you push it in it locks into place and then push down it locks. And then we'll grab this piece. You want to do it this order because if this hose is already on, it's gonna make getting that off a little difficult. Okay, so on the bottom of this rubber tube is a little flap. It's kind of hard to show you, but it's kept wanting to go in the air box. So make sure you pull it back enough, get it in there. And then right here in the air box is a little notch and it matches with a notch right here in the rubber hose. So make sure that's all lined up. There you have it. That's the air filter. That really wasn't as bad as some of the videos I saw made it out to be. So let's go check out the cabin air filter, see if that's as bad as what I've seen. Just looked at the owner's manual and they said it. Take it to the dealer for service. So based on what I've seen is that you, this panel has to come out. So just grab it here, pull straight out. And if I don't need this, I'll let you know. And this panel is supposed to come out too, somehow. Oh. Well, it comes out. You just really have to yank it. You can see it's. Oh, well, you can see it's nothing but straight pins. So just pull straight really, really hard. Like we got one, two, three, and four screws. And I believe this should slide out. Let's try that. So it is the same 7 millimeter from doing the air filter. I cannot believe they would make this this damn difficult for a cabin air filter. So, uh, gotta love this. So you have a fuse panel back here, right here where the shifter is. 
you're gonna grab this handle and give it a little pull see there's two feet down here in the bottom so you want to pull it down towards you and then this comes out and let me get this out of the way for you and then we have this piece here that's wanting to come out that should separate from that somehow but it's not wanting to so so right here the far corner there appears to be one of these uh little plastic pop rivet type deals it's possibly holding this thing back And another seven millimeter, possibly. Yeah, look at that. Then, okay, now it comes out. Wow, what a debacle. And then this should be, it's looking like the cabin air filter. I'm not sure how to pop it out. Ah. Uh, tabs right here of course they gotta make it impossible so right here there's a tab that needs to be bent back on both sides of this and then we can pull this out hopefully so not looking terrible but all this work will replace it very important we want these words airflow with the arrow down facing just like that we want it facing our direction because that's the way the air goes if you didn't take note when you pulled it out you should have I should have said something but I did note Alright, so it's a little finicky getting between these two tabs, so there we go. And we got oh, our pot is really, really hard to get light in here and hold everything. It is really hard, but there's a tab right here, and there's a tab over here. You just have to pull. This one's not actually that bad. This one's hard because of this metal bracket. So there we have that back in. Really like to thank the engineer GM that did this. You're a moron. Well, how, why you had to make this so hard? Okay, so in case we miss this, don't forget there's a wire here for your glove box light. So we're just gonna go ahead and push this back in. It should just go fairly easily. Also here on the side. Um, couple of tabs here right here right here that you'll have to pull back on to get that glove box to release you want to make sure that they're locked in place when you get it all back together so I actually want to put this thing back first so I don't like the way it's being bent I don't think I need anything over here. So this piece here, it's just going to, you know, just pull right here. It'll pop loose, okay? And just swing it out of the way like that. So that's how that comes in case you missed it the first time. Be careful, look, I put some scratches right there in my glove box doing that for you. But there we go. And then, We can put this back in. So hopefully you can see that right there. There's two little squares that these feet want to lock into. And then that locks into place. So that's actually kind of cool. I didn't know there was even a fuse box back there. So I just learned something about my own car. How cool is that? All right. 
seven millimeters here on the side. Two right here on this side. These magnetic hex bits work really, really great for jobs like this. One more seven millimeter right here under the glove box. We have our rivet, which is two pieces. Or I call it a rivet, I don't know. I always like to put, well, actually I guess it's easier to put it together now. Just don't push it all the way in, you want it like that, dangling down. Push it in, and then push that centerpiece, and then it's locked. And now all we have is this piece over here tab right here so that's gonna want to be the first thing that goes in yeah, I guess we need to make sure that we actually have it the right way first there we go okay so that tab actually points forward and kind of locks into the carpet so let's just get a couple of these lined up here have it it's in get it so there's a little tab right here and you can see there's a cutout in the carpet i know it's hard everything's black but it all blends in but there you go there we have it hey ladies and gentlemen so that's not really that hard at all yeah the inside is definitely a lot more complicated than it needs to be shame on you gm for engineering that stupidity that should not take that long to do a cabin air filter but what I love about doing these videos is that it gives the person that's never worked on their car the, the tools and the guidance to go ahead and do this. This isn't anything that's going to cause any kind of harm or anything like that. Um, in that intake tube, that sensor, don't touch it, don't play with it, don't blow air in there. That's a sensitive, finely tuned little piece of equipment, your mass airflow sensor. So when you take that black tube off, be careful with that. It's the only thing that you can really mess up. So it doesn't need to be unplugged. It doesn't need any of that stuff. So air filter is pretty straightforward. Cabin air filter, a little bit of a pain, but it's nothing you can't handle. I've done a few how-to videos. I did a blower motor on the HHR. I even did an air filter on it, and I've gotten a lot of compliments. It saved the people a lot of money from having to go to the dealership. Gave them the confidence to go ahead and pick up a screwdriver and do the job. So hopefully this did the same for you basic maintenance on the car so i hope you got some value out of this and if you enjoy travel if you travel if you enjoy traveling over the world or if you want to see what's in title in the u.s that's what we me and my wife have planned of course with the pandemic kind of put the brakes on that but we have a motorhome we're going to be traveling all across the u.s and then we're going to continue our travels overseas check out my travel playlist down below we've already gone to a few countries like russia the netherlands panama on the name of few and we have, the, like I said, the motorhome, and we're just kind of waiting for everything to kind of open back up and travel freely. So that's kind of our game plan for the channel. I am a car enthusiast. I have that 91Z28 off screen back here. I have another Camaro, GTO, and SS and all that in the back. So if you like cars, you like travel, maybe go ahead and subscribe and join us for these adventures and some of the stuff we do with the cars. If you got any value out of this video to save you some money, there's a PayPal link down there, maybe throw two, three, five dollars. It all helps to go fund and put these videos together for you. You can also go to my Amazon store and Amazon store and purchase these parts. I get a little commission for driving you there, but it adds nothing to your cost zero. So save my Amazon store as your Amazon homepage. And just shop through that and I get a little commission, like I said, for driving there. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you buy. Uh, it has nothing to your cost. Like I said, it helps the channel out. Check out the link down below. I also got some cool discounts for you. So we got neon signs like this over here that can be custom made. And all kinds of products in that. So thank you for watching. I hope you got some value out of this. I hope you got your car tuned up. And we'll see you on the road. Stay safe. Thanks for watching. And hopefully we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.